Hello, in this video, we explain the design of the decoders. A decoder is a device that selects one output based on the binary inputs. In other words, we can call it as a device that converts an n-bit code into two to the power n outputs where only one is active for any combination of the inputs. So if n is equal to 3, it will have 3 inputs and it will have 8 outputs. And for this example, we call it a 3 by 8 decoder. With the 3 inputs, we can call them x, y, and z. And we need to note the order of x, y, and z. So x is the most significant bit and z is the least significant bit. x has the weight 2 to the power 2, y 2 to the power 1, and z 2 to the power 0. And the output, the decoder, sorry, selects output x if the input is the binary representation of x. So let us say that the input is 0, 1, 1, which is decimal 3. In this case, output 3 will be 1, and all other outputs will be zeros. Now you will ask, what, when, or why do we use a decoder? A decoder is really a converter from n to the power n. So it can be used as an example to convert from binary to octal, which means we give the binary code of the digit here at the input, and the digit itself will be one at the output. Or it can be used for memory address selection, as we will show in chapter seven, or selection of any kind. And it can also be used to construct arbitrary logic functions, as we will see next. So it will take the values 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, until 1, 1, 1. And when x, y, and z is equal to 0, 0, 0, the output d naught will be 1, and all other outputs will be zeros. Whereas if the inputs are 0, 0, 1, d1 will be 1, and all other outputs will be zeros. And if the inputs are 0, 1, 0, output d2 will be 1, others will be zeros, and so forth. If the inputs are 1, 1, 1, D7 will be 1, and all others will be 0. This is the truth table of the decoder, which we can use to construct the circuit of the decoder. Of course, we can easily see that D0, as an example, is the min term x prime, y prime, and z prime. And D1 is the min term x prime, y prime, z, and so on. And D7 equals the min term x y and z, all this as examples. At the full circuit of the decoder, we find that it consists of eight AND gates, where each AND gate generates the respective min term. So that's min term 0 for D0, min term 1 for D1, min term 2 for D2, and so on for D3, D4, D5, D6, and min term uh, 7 for d7, which is d7 equals x, y, and z. And this is the construction of the decoder. It simply, simply generates the sequence of min terms. And we can say that the decoder combines the variables into min terms. So that is the circuit of the decoder. Very, very simple circuit. Of course, for three variables, we have an 8 AND gates. For n variables, we have 2 to the power n AND gates, which could really be complex if n is large. Now, that was a very simple circuit for the decoder. Usually, all circuits have additional features. In addition to the data inputs, usually it has what we call an enable input. An enable input is a control input where the circuit generates output only if the enable is selected. As an example, E could be Z, E equal to zero if it is on, if it is active, 
or E is equal to 1 if it is not active, or could be the other way around, actually. There's no problem with that. There's no, it doesn't mean E to Saudi E is equal to 0 to be active or inactive or selected or not selected or enabled or disabled. Now, we can show an example of 2 to 4 line decoder with enable, and this decoder this time we will use NAND implementation as opposed with the AND implementation that we have just seen in the previous. So for 2 to 4 decoder, we have two inputs. We call them A and B, and we have one enable input. We call it E. Therefore, the truth table, it will have three inputs, two for data, A and B, and one for the control. Now let us assume that E is equal to 1. When E is equal to 1, this is 0 here, and this is 0, and this is 0, 0, 0, and 0, and with anything is 0, inverted 1. So this is 1 here, and 1, and 1, and 1. So when E is 0, all the outputs are 1, which means they are all disabled. There is no output on the decoder. Now, in order to enable the decoder, we make E is equal to 0. So if this becomes 0 here, E prime will be 1, this will be 1. So this will be 1, and this is 1, and this is 1, and this is 1. Now, the NAND gates, the other inputs to the NAND gates will enable the outputs. So if we take A is 0 and B is 0 as an example, this will be here 0. And this will be 0, this will be 1, and this will be 1, this will be 1 here, and this will be 1 here, and this is 1, this will be 1. And if we trace the circuit, we found that we find that this is 0, and all the others are 1s. Therefore, when E is 0, A and B are 0, 0, we find D naught is 0, and all the others are 1s, we say that D naught is active and all the others are not active. Same thing exactly, we can repeat actually the analysis. We will find out that when E is 0, A and B is 0, 1, D1 is active. And when E is 0, AB1, 0, we find that D2 is active. And finally, if A, E is 0, AB1, 1, we find that D3 is active. So we have only one active output depending upon the values of the inputs whether there are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 provided that e is 0 this is called active low outputs as compared with the previous decoder which has active high outputs and when we have active low outputs we use nand gates not and gates Now we can construct larger decoders from a smaller decoder. As an example, if we have 3 by 8 decoders, two of them, we can construct a 4 by 8, sorry, 4 by 16 decoders from the two 3 by 8 decoders. And for this purpose, the enable input is used for building larger decoders as follows. Let us assume that the inputs are W, X, Y, and Z, where X, Y, and Z, these three inputs, the least significant inputs, are inputs to both decoders here, X, Y, and Z, and W is uh, entered as follows. W prime is the enable of the first decoder, and W is the enable of the second decoder. So, when W is 0, this will be 1, and this one is enabled, and this is 0, and this one is disabled. So, all these will be zeros, and depending upon X, Y, and Z, one of these outputs will be enabled. And vice versa, when W is 1, this will be 0 here, 
and this will be disabled and this will be one which will be enabled so in this case either the upper decoder will be enabled for w equal to zero or the lower decoder will be enabled to when w is equal to one therefore we find when w is equal to zero one of these outputs is active only and when w is equal to one one of these outputs is active and therefore as if we have converted four variables into 16 different outputs here only one of the 16 is output at a time now the question is can we use the new decoder to get a 5 to 32 line decoder actually the answer is no because we use the enable inputs here to handle w and with this decoder we don't have an enable input anymore so it cannot be used now we go look at implementing functions using decoders. Actually, the decoder, uh, since it implements all the main terms, we can easily implement any Boolean function. Let's take an example of the full adder where the sum is equal to sigma 1, 2, 4, 7, and the carry sigma 3, 5, 6, 7, as we have seen before. And therefore, all we have to do, we apply the inputs x, y, and z at the inputs of the decoder and the outputs, the sum, we, or, the main terms, 1, 2, 4, and 7. And for the carry, we or the main terms, 3, 5, 6, and 7, and we are done. That's very simple. Now, one last thing we'd like to talk about, the enable signals. Enable signal is a signal that either permits or prevents something from happening or occurring. So it's a control signal. The state is described as either active or passive, or we call it on or off, or enabled or disabled. And this has nothing to do with the polarity. So the polarity, the polarity, it could be active high or active low. If it is active high, the schematic symbol doesn't have a bubble, and active low, the schematic symbol always has a bubble. Bubble always means active law or negation and so on.